Welcome back to the Marriage Series. This is video three. In our last two videos of the Marriage Series, we discussed why we need each other and why we fight like we do. In the first part of the video, I'm gonna help you track your own cycle in your relationship. And in the second part, I'm gonna cover how to use that cycle to stop the same fight, different day. You can track your parts of the cycle on your own, but it is best to do it with your spouse so that you can get both parts of the cycle together. The first two videos are key to understand why I'm asking the questions and can help give you context and how to answer them. If you haven't watched them, click here to go back and see them. Also, I've created a handout to use alongside this video. You can download it for free. The link is in the description, so check it out. The first thing we need to do to track your cycle of getting stuck in the same argument different day is to understand our triggers. Our triggers are what take a conversation from a discussion to all upset. It's a switch where we stop thinking and start reacting. Triggers are not a thought or a perception. It is something that is physically happening, such as an eye roll, tone of voice, or that phrase they say. Putting down, they're being mean to me, is an interpretation. It's not what they're physically doing. What I'm asking for is a critical tone, they point out my mistakes, or it could be they don't respond, they show no emotion, or they walk away from me. Take a moment to write down your triggers. Now let's talk about how you perceive those triggers, the meaning you give them. This is the actual most important piece of the puzzle. In counseling, I would say, what did that say to you when they raised your voice? Examples are, they don't care what I think. I'll never get this right, or we'll never fix this. Notice that each example highlighted a different perception of either self, I will never get this right, other, they don't care, or us, we will never fix this. Think about all three angles when you answer this. The handout gives you more examples to use. You can circle the ones that speak to you or write your own down but take a moment to go ahead and finish this piece. This perception is really important because it shows us the why under our triggers. We may think it represents our partner, but it's really a window into you. Going with the above example, they don't care. If this is something you feel or think, it means that feeling heard, understood, and cared about is important to you. If this is a triggering point for you, then it means that it's a need that's not being met or that you're hypervigilant to this warning sign because of a past hurt. This is a sore spot that needs attention and care to overcome. We will dive into how to process and heal that in the next video. The next part we're gonna talk about is that our reactive emotion. This is what everyone sees on the surface. It's how we react to that trigger and our perception that you just wrote down. Examples are anger, frustration, defensiveness, going numb, feeling overwhelmed. It's a ramp up emotion that takes us from a casual conversation to a hot topic. This isn't something you plan to do or even want to do. This emotion comes from the depths and comes on usually pretty strong. So take a moment to write down what your reaction emotions are. Now let's explore how we react. Do you defend yourself? Tell your partner how they're wrong? Go into your head and shut down? The trigger, the perception, and the emotional reaction they occur almost instantaneously, and if we didn't pay attention to them, we wouldn't even notice them happening. Yet how we react is something you do notice, and it's what your spouse sees. This is what we later can feel embarrassed about doing, and our handout gives a list of examples that you can choose from. If we're honest, we've done all of them, but pick two or three that you usually do. So go ahead and take a moment to do that. So this is how it all comes together. Usually what you do in reaction is what triggers your spouse, and then they go through the same steps. This creates an infinity loop that keeps going around and around, but it usually gets worse and worse. For example, the cycle may start by you pointing out how to load the dishwasher. They react with defensiveness. You may feel unheard and then react by saying, you never listened to me. Now we're going deeper. It's bigger and more emotional than just the dishwasher. Soon examples of the past may come up, and the increase in emotion and used examples shut the other person down. And now they start to react within their own emotions. The key to all of this is what's underneath the cycle. What fuels the cycle? This is the vulnerable emotion. These are the feelings like ashamed, broken, lost, hurt, lonely. We need to take time to explore these. 
It will require you to stop thinking about how your partner needs to change or blaming your behavior on a reaction to them. To do this, you need to sit with your reaction without judgment and answer, what is the pain that fuels that reaction? Where do I hold that pain in my body? And if that pain had words, what would it say? If you notice yourself moving away from how it feels, be courageous and turn back in. It hurts, but comfort it. Finish the sentence in your mind. Of course it hurts. It comes from, fill in the blank. Of course I react. I'm protecting myself from, fill in the blank. I know now, I know why this makes sense. Go ahead and complete those sentences now in your handout. Take a moment with this part, slow down and let yourself reflect on it. Replay that last paragraph if needed. I walked you through how to track your cycle with your partner, but you can also track your past relationship cycles, relationships that may have already ended. It is a great window into your vulnerable emotions in relationships over time and how past hurts may be affecting you now or triggering you now. Next week, I'll have a short that will go into this more. It's called the red shirt example. If you're finding this video helpful, please hit the thumbs up and consider sharing it with others. Thank you. To get the conversation started, tell me in the comments something you learned about yourself doing this exercise and a new perception you have of your spouse. I'll go first. When I first did this exercise at a hold me tight weekend, I learned that the angrier I get, the lonelier I feel. And I learned that my husband gets defensive the more he needs me to validate him. I look forward to hearing what you have to share. My recommendation for this video is not a book, it's an experience. I recommend finding a Hold Me Tight Couples Retreat weekend near you. A link to look them up is in the description below. I had a great experience with one myself, even though I do this for a living, and I'll share with you which one I went to. If you want or need help with this process more than just one weekend, I also included a link for you to find a counselor who practices EFT near you.